Hey guys, I'm Jaden Dupree, and today I'll be showing you the basics of a Mass A shot. Now I show, I know that I demonstrate a lot of Mass A shots on the channel, but I never really describe the fundamentals or the physics behind the shot, which I think is the most important part to learn. So it's my fault that I haven't shown you guys that. Uh, so I'm here with that video today. It's highly, highly requested. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. So the goal in these shots, I'm going to have to curve around the eight to make the nine. Uh, and to curve the cue ball, there's a French word used for that called a masse. Now we're not really sure, I don't really know what that means even though I take French. I'm not sure what it means, uh, but it probably has something to do with curving. Uh, so I, that's what I'm going to guess. Now a masse can be in place of a kick. If the, you find that the kick is hard, you can just kick that ball in. This would normally be a masse shot though because of how easy the masse is. And I'll show you how to judge uh, the easiest of a masse versus a kick later on in the video. But to curve around this cue ball, there's a few things we have to curve around the eight ball, there's a few things we have to do. Uh, now if we just hit around the eight ball, you see our cue ball doesn't curve at all. Because the back of our cue is completely level, if not unelevated. When you elevate the back of your cue and hit with some spin, then you see the cue ball start to curve. Now what spin do I need to hit with? Usually you need to hit below center on the cue ball and then to the direction of where you want to curve. So if we are curving around the right side of the eight ball, that means our cue ball is going off to the right and curving back to the left. Now it's opposite on this side, it's going out to the left and curving to the right. So whatever direction it's curving, not where it's deflecting off to, but where it's curving, we're going to use low and mix that with uh, that side. So if we're curving to the right, we're hitting on the right. If we're curving to the left, we're hitting on the left. Now there's a few things that you need to do. Uh, with the Masse shot, speed is a big thing. If we hit this really, really soft with an elevated cue like this, we don't really, we curve way too soon to curve in time for that nine. Now, if we hit really hard, we don't curve at all until we hit that rail, which is very, very important. We kind of need that cue ball to curve. That shot is equivalent to this, just with more spin. So, another big factor in Masse shots is the level of elevation. You saw earlier, if, I, if my cue is not elevated at all and I just use low right spin, uh, nothing happens. But if it's overly elevated, it's going to curve way too soon and way too much. It'll curve more with a uh, higher speed if you're going out into the open. If you're about to hit a rail, uh, it's not necessarily true, but it will curve way more with a high speed and a high elevation than with a low speed and a non-existent elevation or a lower elevation. Uh, so you see the curve gets bigger and bigger as you elevate the cue up. The maximum you can go is 90 degrees, uh, which you would have to air bridge. Now sometimes if you're near a rail, this can be helpful. Uh, to put your knee up, if you need to curve a ton, put your knee up on the table and elevate like this. Bridge your hand on your waist like this. Uh, and if you are curving that much, something that you need to do is you need to make sure that when you curve it, your tip comes in contact with the table and it stays there. This is the equivalence to say if I were making this eight ball and trying to put some spin on my cue ball to go forward, probably scratching that corner, to following through. So that is the follow through on a Masse shot right there. So when is it easier to kick, uh, to Masse at a ball rather than kicking at the ball, and when is it easier to kick at the ball rather than massaying at the ball? Now I find when a ball is hanging over the edge of the pocket, let's say it's deep in the edge of the pocket on a table that has a deep shelf. So uh, this part of the pocket is deeper into the pocket than a normal table. So that means the ball sits further back without going in. So that means if I mess up just a little bit, if I miscalculate this angle right here, I'm gonna hit off the rail. Let's say I hit off the rail 
and I can't hit that ball. Now that's when I find it easier to mass A, because when you kick at a ball, and if you hit it full on, like dead in the face, look where your cue ball goes naturally, it goes right into the pocket. Now if there's a little bit of spin on that and it goes into it, it does not. So with this mass A shot right here, I mass A when the ball is uh, hanging in the pocket and if there's not a full ball that I need to clear. So if there's like half a ball that I need to clear, then yeah, I'm going to elevate and shoot that with low right spin because uh, I find that shot easier than kicking at it because I can miss that kick way easier than I can miss this mass A. Now if this ball were right here and I was a full ball behind the eight, I would not mass A at this. I would most definitely kick and just try to hit it. I'd play safe off the kick, uh, but the, the main thing I want you to take away from this is don't mass A at it if it's not completely necessary and if it's not likely to make the ball. Just go ahead and just shoot the kick if it's easier. Uh, but it's what's easy for you. But the only you need to know both of them because they will both come up. And the only way you will know both of them is if you shoot both of them. So practice the kicks. Practice the mass A's. Uh, practice, practice, practice everything. Now I'd even mass A if it, the ball were a little bit further out. This would probably be an easier kick than mass A. But I'd still mass A at that ball, just because I've done so many mass A shots that I am comfortable with it. Now you also need to maintain a full stroke uh, on a mass A shot, even if you're not completely elevated. So how I showed you the tip contacts the table, with this the stroke is a little bit different. We're just going to stay down and our tip is just going to stay where it was. It's like a regular pull follow through. So imagine if we're making this eight ball, it's just like that. So you always want to follow through through the shot. Uh, it's the exact same with a mass A shot, even though it's a little bit different technique. Now aiming on a mass A shot. How do you aim on a mass A shot? Well, what you need to do is just get a feel for the amount of spin that your tip and your cue and your chalk can put on the cue ball. Different chalk makes a difference. Uh, like Kamui chalk puts a ton of spin on it uh, compared to master chalk or compared to anything really. But right here, uh, if you raise and elevate your cue up like this uh, and you aim past the eight ball. If you aim, let's say we're aiming at this first diamond which will be a little bit too far to the left. Now if we aim directly at the eight ball, watch what happens. We're aiming straight into the eight. You see how it cuts the eight into the side rail? That's because when you hit on the right side of this ball, you see how it goes off to the left instead of just staying on a straight line? That's called deflection. So there's also a little bit of deflection that takes place. So when you're making a shot like this, I'm actually aiming for about right here which will take my cue ball into the 8 normally, if I aim right there, it'll take it into the 8 normally. But since I'm using right spin, and a lot of it, and it's deflecting, it's going to go around that ball. Uh, now that scratch is one thing that you may need to watch out for. That's the one thing that mass A shots have the tendency to do. If the ball is deep in the shelf, or closer to this uh this short rail right here, that pushes the cue ball into this little point right here, which pushes it into the pocket. So if you're playing, let's say, like a seven foot valley, kicks may be easier. Uh, but if you're playing on a nine foot diamond, the mass A is easier. Uh, so different types of tables means different types of easier shots. Uh, I mean, another shot that could go along with this is just kicking up and down the rail. I mean, that, that's an easy shot from this level because you can hit this rail really anywhere and uh, it's easy to make that ball. So if you don't have a mass A shot down, it's always good to have other options, including a jump shot. A jump shot's what I'd most likely shoot in this situation, actually, uh, just depending on how far away the cue ball is. Now, that's another thing that we need to talk about. What if the ball is like this? It was like this, you need less curve, so you elevate less. 
if it's closer, what if it's like this? If it's closer, you need more elevation in order to make that ball. So you see everything is a bit different, uh, but there are a lot of different options and a lot of different ways and different variables to get this done. Uh, but the mass A is definitely one that you should know and it's become easy to me as you've seen. Uh, and it helps me make a lot of balls that I normally would not make. Uh, so let's keep it going. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button down below. If you want to be notified when I post a new video, you can click the subscribe button. Then the bell icon right next to it, that will just send you an email and a notification saying that I've uploaded a new video. Check out my sponsors down in the description. Click that little drop down arrow, you'll see a bunch of links and that is to all my sponsors. Thank you to all of them. Uh, they make this possible. Thank you. Thank you guys so much, I have to say this, for 50,000 subscribers. Uh, my, my goal for this channel is 100,000 subscribers so I can get that silver play button award from uh, Google. Uh, but you guys are crushing it right now. We're growing by about 300 subscribers a day. I uh, can't thank you guys enough. Thank you for watching the videos. Tell your friends about the channel. Let's see if we can hit 100,000 subscribers in the next six months. I believe we can do it, uh, but we do need your help to make it possible. So share it with your friends, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, share it on Instagram, share it anywhere you want to share it, share it on your Snapchat story. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.